three four okay. seven nine 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 four five or nine four seven. Three four seven nine four five seven two zero seven. Seven nine four five seven two. All right, I'll try it again. And if I'm not not able to get back, you know what happened? You call me back on my phone. We'll just have to deal with my daughter being here. Okay. All right. It's it's the sound. So Susan's taking a siesta for a minute to dial back in, and Janet's doing the and same. Correct. I I need just five minutes There's and then Janet. I'll be back. I'll be back in okay. five. Take it away, Richard. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> fascinating. Yourself. Okay. Uh, this is Doctor Richard Knight. I'm a theologian. My encounters with extraterrestrials bear a small amount of experience, uh, nothing anywhere near what Susan is sharing with us today. Um, it's absolutely fascinating. And maybe perhaps she's sharing in order to put the call out so that she can reach un- reach others that are of her own species or of her, of her own race, or if nothing else, at least bring forward those that are light workers and warriors just like herself that are here on the planet with a similar mission. Because right okay, now... Okay, she's this, back now. Yeah. She's back now. Susan, uh, you there? Susan, can you hear us? Yeah. Thank you, Ricky, R- R- oh. for, for that dialogue. I, I appreciate that backup, that validation. Well, it makes good sense, you know. I mean, you're coming forward now because you feel isolated and alone. And I think we've exactly. all gone through that process. Uh, you know, when you go through the ascension and the awakening process and you all of a sudden discover who you truly are, you're saying, well, wait a minute, did I really sign up for this? Am I really who I think I am? Am I just fooling myself? Or is it delusion or what? And then all of a sudden you've got all these outside uh, ETs, etc., that are informing you about all this different information. And you feel, you know, like, I guess the best way to be to put it would be like in a hundred places all at the same time. And you're not confused that you're there. Rather, you're more confused because you don't know which um, telephone wire to hit next as to what dialogue you want to play on next. So it's like uh, you're this universal spokesperson for all these different races on all these different levels from all these different dimensions. And that's, that's incredible. I have, I have, I have never met anyone uh, like yourself, Susan, and I am deeply pleasured by our acquaintance. Okay. And I look, I look forward possibly to getting to know you better in the future, if that would be of a like mind to you. But uh, this is just absolutely fascinating. And I think the timing is crucial because, as they say, nothing happens without a reason, and everything happens at the right time. So this must be the right time for you to share all this. And, yeah, I would think it's going to bring together a tremendous amount of people of like-mindedness that are going to create their own network, and they're going to be using you as a pivotal point because you've already, you've already validated yourself, but you've also validated – who knows how many thousands of others? It's just, it's just incredible. Take That's it away. That's right, Susan. So, Susan, this is a good platform. You're doing a wonderful job. I'm so glad you allowed uh, Janet Lesson of Hawaii and Dr. Richard Knight of Georgia to join us, and I'm in Gulf Breeze, Florida. Now, Janet's given her Gmail on here. Uh, and Susan, you don't really want any direct messages at this time while you're building your story and your personality and writing your book. Is that correct? Correct. And then you'll decide what pictures you want to put into your copyright and your book. Uh, Richard's writing a book at the same time, so this is something we can enjoy together, everyone. And uh, Let's CJ, I want to keep started. I want to keep the there focus on. Yeah, I want to keep the focus on Susan. All right, so uh, Susan, it's your platform. Uh, we're just the invited guest. So where would okay, you like so to go from here? The, uh, I'm going to finish on the Aquarians because they're quite unique. I have to say, I'm very pleased, and I got a special affection for them. They're very unique. I don't know why everybody's afraid of them. I don't understand. 
My just anyway, is fear. I, 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 I don't get it. Okay, for example, um, what, okay, there was a time I was at the Waltz Mill facility training in New when it, in Pennsylvania, and we were training for the Eddy Current crew. That was before we went out to that um, nuclear plant outage in the Midwest. Okay, so I was asleep one night. Of course, I had this scene. I'm always having scenes where it was the courtyard in the back of the Waltz Mill facility, and there was all these, like, I don't know if they're air conditioning units or whatever, and they were caged in and, and the chain link fence, like, around them. And there was, like, a, a, just a straight lawn area, a grass area between, like, the back of the facility and some woods that um, – and anyway, apparently, and I didn't know this, and I might get it if I say this, um, there was a, there was a ser- and I thought, what the hell is going on? Why am I seeing this? Is there really a war going on out there? Wait a minute. Fighting? I never heard of this. Where's this coming from? I see these ships up there shooting lasers at each other, and then two or three scout crews were on the ground running around. And they were trying to get away from the ships that were shooting lasers at them. And then I show up with Naya, Yisaron, Odovar, um, Argdalon, and Zydaron or whoever. And we're fighting. And, and um, we're running around. I go, well, what's going on here? And then Naya, the Nyandans no longer work with us. They broke away. That's another thing because their planet went belly up and and they got involved and. With, with with the uh, tall whites, so we we had the ban relationship with them, but that's another story. But Naya was there, Morja was there, and we were all there um, walking around. And we, I told the other crews to to take position and try to aim at the belly of the ship or something like that. And when they couldn't do it, I said, "Okay, walk around the corner." And we set up. A, 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 what they call a portable portal where they just literally walk off the planet back up into their own ships. Literally, we can do that. Well, anyway, I beam down underneath, and, and, and there's basements underneath the Waltz Mill facility. And they're not basements that you use for, like, you know, the, the residual heat remover pumps or the steam generators or anything like that for the nuclear plant. These were separate ba- basements that were used by the military to interrogate and brainwash different witnesses or different people for intelligence training or torture or whatever they I, – I, as far as I'm concerned, they were torture chambers. Me and Naya and Yisaron and Ardalan beamed down in there, and there was two or three alien abductees that were there, and they were shot up with sodium pentothal, and they were going to be um, interrogated by – I don't know who these people were, some kind of – Intelligence agents or something And there were some two or three negative ET tall whites there with them And two ne- negative Reptilian types And I said The hell with this And and I tagged every one of them With a resonating energy signature and, they, and, and I spoke To the ship and they beamed them Straight out of the chair up into our ships And then, and then the ones that were there Started fighting us and I, and and I started fighting him. I killed two or three of them with with the laser pointer. I'm not going to tell you where the laser comes from, but then then I then I yelled and I yelled and my device. You yes, sir. What? Hello. Hello? Am I on the... Hello? Who are you trying to talk to, Susan? I was trying to talk to TJ and, and Janet. They're not there? I presume they are. Talking. We're here. Okay, we were muted. Keep talking. It's okay. Keep going, Susan. Okay. So then, so then, so the, then the ship pulses me as hard as it can. And that pull drops the uh, drops the other people and kills them instantly, and it fried the computer system. And then after that, we all beamed out. And then I woke up, and I thought, "What the hell was that?" 
And I said, you're telling me that there's underground basements at the Waltz Mill facility? And I know exactly where they're at, too. And I thought, uh-oh, I hope nobody catches wind of this one. And I go into work the next day, and I pretend to be normal like nothing happened. Now, that was cre- that, that was like extreme. So I have that you and can then, tell when we're muted. So it just makes it clear blurring for you, Susan. But uh, I, I, I'm amazed you can tell the difference if we're muted. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't think I was on the air anymore. Oh no, You're you were on great. the air. Yep. So then, so another, anyway, another you scene. keep going, keep going. Yes. So then, th- this is the most revealing part about the Urquequians. I couldn't believe this. I had another scene, and this was like back in the late '90s. No, I, or was it 2003? I'm not sure. But I was up in in their ship, along along with. My people, you, you know, Yisron, Argalon, Odovar, all of them, and Darlon and Morlon and Arlon, who, who are the three leaders of the Urquequians that are also very, you know, intimate with me, they showed me uh, a, a flat screen on the wall in front of the control panel that I was standing at, and then... On the control panel is the quadrupole couple spherical grid plate, like I told you about. And then there was a smaller imaging screen in front of it, flat. It's like a thin piece of film stretched between two rods. And what I was doing was I was actually manipulating an energy field pattern on the sphere in front of me and with the with the two with the four poles, I can project that image onto the little screen. And once I get it right, I project it onto the big flat screen in front of me on the wall. And what happens is it was a planet that we had just created. And I got a picture of that one. And that planet was uh, two, two or three months later, um, they had NASA just announced that they just discovered a new Earth type planet twice as big as the Earth and it's called twenty two Kepler B. And I thought, What? We were, that planet existed right after I had that scene or that dream. I couldn't believe it. So that must have been the one we did. Well apparently what we do is after we create the planet, we it goes through different stages of activation. And the last phase that we do is called the igneous rock activation phase, where the water that's in the center of the planet percolates to the surface. And then after that, um, I had several subsequent dreams, again, with the Urquequians and, and the Yuma, I mean, the Archerons, the Urquequians, the Obercon, Ardenon, where we would go back and forth, and we, were do, we did the lichen synthesis, and then and and then we did um, the atmospheric stabilization, and then after that we have to do the terraforming phase, and that's where Bigfoot comes in because they can lift those huge trees and stuff. And after we put in the lichen phase, where we do the lichens and the funguses and all that stuff on the planet to condition the surface soil and everything, we do the atmospheric activation where we stabilize the gases in the atmosphere and get to the right ratios of different gases, and then we also put living organisms in the atmosphere. Uh, the biosphere is what it's referred to. It, that's what we use the term. The humans probably use it differently. Biosphere means the atmosphere around the planet, and every atmosphere has living organisms in it, and those living organisms, the ratio of those living organisms and and, and the concentration of each type of organism per cubic deciliter of air it will determine the overall health of that planet of that whole ecosystem on that planet and then the last phase after we a- activate that we have the terraform where we put in the different trees and the forests and that's where the bigfoots come in because they're a terraforming race they, they, they go and they put in the huge trees evergreen trees already full grown already active and they, they're able to lock it in and make it live where the trees don't die after we after they're planted. 
and then and then after that is then the next phase is the colonization 